So I recently made a video on how I was able to crack a, a full-time remote job using open source. But looking at the comments, I realized 90% of the comments were around, we don't yet know how to contribute or Hargirat's IQ might be really high or this guy went to an IIT, which is why he was able to do this. And this is not very easy for normal people to do. So in this video, I want to go back around eight years when I first started to contribute to open source. I am going to share uh, my journey on year one of trying to get into Google Summer of Code and not getting in the ugliest contributions I've ever made, but starting from the very bottom in my second year, then contributing slightly better, but making it into Google Summer of Code, but like there were some uh, uncertainties around it because I did not make the best contributions and luck ended up pay paying some part. But in my third year, smashing it out of the park, making the best contributions out there. And even before the results came out, I pata tha ke I'll pretty much make it to GSOC because of the contributions I was making and my interactions with the mentors of that organization. So in a span of two years, how I went from a complete novice in open source and general programming to a uh, a sort of expert or like the best I think you can be in college. And I was able to intern at Mozilla, which is a pretty big organization uh, through Google Summer of Code. I think a lot of my learning, in fact, most of my learning happened in college by contributing to open source. Uh, after college, I joined Goldman Sachs for like a year and a half, but nothing that I learned there helped me become a freelance remote software developer because Usually in big tech, what you're contributing doesn't really apply to the real world. So basically what I did in college is what eventually helped me crack remote jobs and helped me do what I do today. So this learning that happened during college uh, was super impactful in my life. And hence I wanted to share that journey starting to the end, beginner to expert. I'll be sharing my actual contributions. I'll be showing you my pull requests, how bad they used to be and how over time I became more confident both in interacting with mentors and contributing to open source. With that, let's get right into the video. Let's get right into my very first contribution. So if you look here, this is 2015. I came to know about this thing uh, called Google Summer of Code from my friends. Did not care about what it was named, did not care about what I had to do, only cared about $5,500, which is what GSOC used to pay back then, which was a lot of money for a first year student. And things were also much cheaper back then. So with that motivation, uh, my seniors, taught me a little bit of Git and GitHub, but as you will see, I was still pretty dumb back then. Um, there was an issue in this organization called OpenStreetMaps. This is like a, an open source Google Maps alternative. And in this repository, I found an issue which should have been fixable with just a two, it was a two line fix. Let me see if I can find the exact issue. Here we go. Introductory help text. The issue says the in introductory help text states something, although technically correct, when viewed here, this text can only be seen by someone who has an account. So directing them to slash user slash new is not helpful. A second minor problem is that it directs to this thing and I was using the dev site. So I was in the, so it wasn't the right link anyways. So this looks like a fairly simple issue to solve. Um, and in the end, I was able to fix it here with a two line fix, there you go. I redirected the user from slash user slash new to slash login and changed like the wording here a little bit. So it was supposed to be a very simple issue where rather than redirecting the user to slash user slash new, because this user is not a new user, they're already logged in. That's what the issue states. You just had to make the user redirect to slash login. So it felt like a great issue to contribute to. It's actually a pretty good first bug for someone to contribute to. But if you look at my pull request, this, I made changes in six different files. Why? Um, this change, I have no idea why I made. This change, I was using the worst editor back then called getit. And whenever you would open a file, it would create a temporary file for that specific file that you've opened. So I opened this file in getit. Getit is like a text editor, very similar to notepad. Whenever you open a file, it will create a temporary file for you. And even if you, I closed it, uh, it would not go away. And what ended up happening was I ended up creating a bunch of duplicates of these files. So this file was a duplicate. As you can see, there's a tilde at the very end, which means um, this file was not supposed to be here. And it was actually a duplicate that uh, get it, the editor created. Same for this file and uh, same for this file. So as you can see, it's like three, six, seven, two contributions. And I remember I was so dumb back then. I showed one of my seniors, hey, I started to contribute and he looked at this and he was like, dude, you've made such a big contribution, show me. And I showed it, showed it to him and he couldn't stop laughing because when he said, wow, you've made such a big contribution, I became super happy. Even though I, I fucking knew it was a small issue. 
and then he looked at this and he laughed so hard a uh, good thing about seniors back then and even today is people don't give you the exact solution so he did not give me the exact solution he just told me there is there are some big things wrong here uh, you're not supposed to uh, commit these files you're only supposed to commit your chains so try to fix it and he basically told me to move from get it to a different editor and as you can see this contributor was always like he was very polite he's like thank you for contributing correct please to make this change is this file and uh, also you've checked in the editor backup files so please remove them and i was so dumb if you see here i made the changes and added en.json to git ignore but still did not fix what he told me to fix which was remove those files and he said there are even more editor backup files now can you try again with a clean pr this is not rude this is actually he's pretty uh chill for for what i have done and uh, i totally understand his frustration at this point so he said just create a new pr this this won't work which was smart and this is where my fate was sealed i was definitely not making it to this organization in gsoc this year because this is a very beginner friendly mistake and even in gsoc they expect ke tumhe thodi cheeze to aati hongi you're not you're supposed to not hit the ground running you're a student they understand that but at the same time you shouldn't be asking such basic questions or doing such basic mistakes so my senior basically told me ke yahan to nahi ho payega try for a different organization i did eventually fix this issue in a different pull request that i just showed you uh, but and i did apply to this organization as well uh, with and this actually did not actually fix the issue either so like basically um uh, first year just started programming i was just understanding things and trying to contribute as best as i can i was also dumb back then i thought with this one contribution and a dumb contribution before this i'll be able to make it so i did apply i was very confident uh, at the results day i was looking at the results page like scrolling through it and of course i did not make it but that's fine uh, because this is what led to some more motivation and me trying in my second year so from my first year to my second year then i made a bunch of contributions like personal projects if you go to my github you can see the flappy bird thing that i made this was uh, october 1 2015 so this was this was actually my first actual programming uh, project that i did the up until this point the thing that you just saw was like it wasn't really programming i was just making textual changes so yahan pe i actually learned how to program so as you can see from march to october 1st is when i actually started learning i don't know what i was doing in the middle if you are a student i would strongly suggest see the start making projects uh, that's the best way to learn i know i can feel this was an inflection point in my learning when i actually created a game or something that people can use put it out on the internet for other people to play saw feedback that people liked it and then went from there iske baad i made a chess game in like 2 to 3 months from here which was a multiplayer game so i understood both front end and back end and by my second year i was extremely confident ki ab main at least contribute kar sakta hu little bit i might not be able to understand the biggest code bases out there but i can still start to contribute so with that let's go to my second year's gsoc contributions this is now uh, in an organization that actually selected me and i did my gsoc in my second year these guys back then uh, also paid 5500 dollars back then gsoc used to pay a lot of money and the contributions that i made here were straight forward Uh, and pretty simple but better than everyone else that's why i said luck played a huge part in this uh, year's selection because bahut zyada log contribute nahi kar rahe the i was probably the only person other than one more guy who contributed and basically both of us got in so competition was less uh, i was not expected to make a lot of contributions um and the ones that i made were decent for example let me show you one that's visual as you can see this was like it was like a tree based game thingy you could create a tree like this uh, on a website and the issue here was that it used should be joined like this like two nodes should be joined like this and they were joined like this so there was like you can see the issue the width of this rectangular bar isn't the same as the width of this uh, circle so the issue was to fix it as you can see a uh, fairly simple change and i've added screenshots from the fix so this was my first contribution and after this i made this also a small one but i picked up a bigger contribution even though i did not i was never able to complete it the undo redo feature which would let users create a tree and then undo and then redo so this gave them some confidence that this person can at least do things and very frankly i was able to contribute here because of the flappy bird game because usme i had dived very deep into javascript so i could understand the things that are happening here even though i for example did not understand classes back then i was able to copy paste i understood tools.prototype.x does something so tools.prototype.y would do the other thing 
So even though I did not know the best things, I could write logic in JavaScript, which was good enough to at least get started on this issue and get some version out there. And it was after this issue that the maintainer of this project messaged me on Gmail. Let me find it. Before that, uh, let me tell you, I reached out to them as well. It's a decent thing to do. Let them know. Uh, you don't have to do it. I don't think this will matter. But I told them about me, told them about the PRs I've made and the undo PR and how I'm trying to approach it. I told them I have interest in their organization and I would like to contribute to GSGT if possible, even take part in Google Summer of Code. And this was their reply eventually. Hi, I'm one of the GSOC organizers and saw your impressive and quick solution to undo and other things. Can you email me directly and let's talk about your possible involvement with GSGT as a GSOC student if you are interested. This was the best sign. In fact, my senior, the person who was laughing in the last year in my contributions, uh, this time saw this email. That guy was like, he's a super genius and not even twice. Back then you could do GSOC three times. Um, he told me after reading this email, Ke ab ho you are definitely in. There is a very slow probability that you don't make it in. So I was fairly confident after uh, this email and of course the contributions that I had made. And exactly that's exactly what happened. Uh, I was able to make it to JSGT, the Gambit organization this year. Super happy. Uh, project was also great. It was a different project, not this one. It was TSGT where I contributed. Eventually, I don't know what's happening with this project yet. I opened this today and I think there are still contributions happening. Someone contributed to it two hours ago. But yeah, this was a good summer. And of course, the money was good as well. So up until this point, I understood JavaScript and after this project, I was able to contribute to a bigger scale project as well. And then I had another year, second year to third year, I basically made a lot of things in college. Uh, it was a quizzing platform that I made called Quizio. Um, I was also doing algorithms back then. I went to ICPC, but my primary focus, I would say, was still in open source and general development. So by the time I reached my third year, uh, I was pretty good at contribution. And I was also good at finding uh, GSOC um, organizations to contribute to. In fact, a lot of my friends actually became mentors in their respective organizations. I personally wanted to be a contributor again. So the next year I started contributing to Mozilla. The journey in Mozilla is also very interesting. Uh, Mozilla is a big organization. So there is usually a lot of competition, but this year I wanted to apply to a more competitive organization and I was confident I would make it because of the skills I had gained in the last two years now. So learning up until this point is first year, I was a complete noob. You saw my first contribution. It was ugly. By the time I reached my second year, I was able to figure things around by copy pasting and also understood how to write some logic. Even though I wasn't able to understand the whole code base of Gambit, I was able to make it into GSOC purely based on some copy pasting, some logical skills. And this may or you may or may not make it to GSOC. This was heavily luck based, but you know you're on the right path if you're able to copy paste and work your way around through a code base. Today, there is chat GPT out there. If chat GPT was out there back then, pretty sure I would be able to contribute much better. So use AI models now and learn prompt engineering. I think you can learn a lot more. You now have a personal mentor with you at all times. Uh, that's super helpful. That's one advice I wanted to share. With that, let's move to my third year. My third year contributions were in Mozilla. The project was called Thimble. It was an online code editor, very similar to Lead Codes Code Editor or like Code Pen, where you paste HTML, CSS, JavaScript on one side and you see output on the other side. So by now I knew a bunch of things. I had done a lot of development. So I was able to set up the code base of Thimble locally very quickly. Thimble was coming to GSOC with a bunch of projects and I was very interested in one. This one involved real time communication they basically wanted to make the code editor collaborative so two people can write at the same time and the editors won't clash and there are a bunch of other issues that come in a collaborative editor but eventually the goal was thimble had an editor where people could paste html css and javascript they wanted to make sure two people can contribute at the same time and basically if one person writes code it appears on the other person's screen and vice versa so this is a very common problem google docs has it a bunch of other collaborative editors have it and it's solved using a very complex algorithm called operational transforms um, so i knew i just had to contribute and fix a lot of issues and that's exactly what i did uh, my first issue if you see here fairly simple uh, let's just see what the issue was The redirects the user to his projects page after he signs in from the home page. So fairly simple issue. In fact, this is an issue. If you see it, 
grab it right then and there and still solve it it's like a very simple issue the initially best issues to find are issues like these because the contributors are not very comfortable with you right now so if it's a simple issue they'll be able to merge it easily i mean now i'm on the other side right i merge other people's pull requests on an open source project so i've realized this that you know when you, you see new contributors it's always good if it's a small issue that they start with so you become comfortable with them eventually they can do big things and whenever you're making a big contribution post a lot of screenshots either write tests or be like spit out as much information as you can because you're new here so it's good for us to have as much context when we're trying to merge your pull requests so from there again a simple issue here i think this might be a simple oh, seems fairly complex but seems like a ui issue fix the issue of pop-up window overflowing to the left side so seems like some ui thing that i fixed here uh, no screenshots that's bad very bad added buttons to toggle this one i sort of remember uh, this one might have a screenshot actually yeah so added like a button here i think let's see what we did here it's been a while auto complete toggle i added the auto complete toggle this one right here the one that lets you disable or enable auto completion of code so again if you look at it there's like a lot of things you can copy paste right if you would give this to a machine learning model it would it would be able to figure out how to write at least all of this logic using this logic and then the other part might still be tricky but at least the ui bit is fairly simple to do now let's see if there's any other thing i want to show between march and april yeah it seems like fairly simple stuff but it was still a lot i think these were i was probably the most con person who was contributing the most and i was the only um, there might be other people but probably the only one who was skilled enough to implement operational transforms in an editor so i did not have too many interactions with the maintainers but i knew i had some interactions on their slack and i knew most probably i will make it in it would have been like some dystopian scenario if they wouldn't have selected me so and that, that's exactly what happened uh, we have a new thimble gsoc contributor this is the email i got i was the only one who got into thimble i think mozilla has a bunch of projects thimble is one of them i was i think the only one who got in here and this is my introductory email if you need some motivation i know this is kind of late but i thought i would send it out anyways we have a new gsoc student joining us in thimble hakirat singh is from india and is excited to jump on board and lead our real-time collaboration google doc style project for thimble for the next three months and hopefully pass that so this was uh probably the most grueling gsoc is me hala tight okay this was a very hard thing to implement and also i was interning at amazon at this time so handling two internships uh plus one of them being so difficult i would not recommend but point being in the end the learning that you get through open source is very vast and it helps you in a lot of things it opens up a world of things for you to contribute to versus that summer i was at amazon i did not learn much very frankly i learned a lot about their internal systems and how to contribute to a very specific project in java and then that project used a bunch of other internal tools so a lot of that learning could not be replicated outside of amazon but the contributions that i made here in first year helped me in my second year things that i did in open source in my second year helped me in my third year so this is a very replicable skill that you can apply across industries if you're doing these full stack projects versus if you're working in a big company most probably a lot of the skills might not be replicable or reusable so piece of advice here is even if you work at big tech fang contribute to open source generally it will help you a lot if you want to ever eject out of big tech and you know go conquer the world and all the organizations that are out there and more specifically if you are a student gsoc is right around the corner you've seen my journey i'm sure you can make it too if not in your first year second year if not in your second year third year kabhi na kabhi to ho hi jayega the only thing you have to do is stay consistent abhi ke liye for the next one month contribute to as many organizations even if there are shitty bugs that you are solving do it if you are able to make it great if not do a lot of personal projects build a lot of things in the next 9 months and next year you will be very well prepared to target gsoc if that's what you aim to do in the next year with that this was a long video but hopefully this was helpful let me know in the comments what you would like to see as the next video i will leave a pinned comment where you can share your suggestions a lot of times the videos that i make are based on the feedback from the last video so let me know with that let's end the video i will see you guys in the next one bye